Hello everyone, I am Polymath, and I'm showing you how to play Magic the Gathering. Thank you for watching, this is episode 4 of the series, and today I am talking about all the different formats and ways to play Magic. But before we start, I just wanted to ask you to please subscribe. It helps out the channel and it takes you no effort, so please subscribe now. For this episode, I'm going to talk about a lot of formats. Unfortunately, I can't cover them all since there's, e th since there's a lot. I'm just going to talk about some of my personal favorites and the larger formats. And the way I'm dividing them up is into constructed formats, limited formats, and casual formats. Constructed formats means you bring a deck to the game. Limited means that you um, build your deck as you go. And casual means that it's constructed, but you have extra types of cards. It, I'm going to start with the constructed formats. Having a format that is constructed means that you start out with a deck that you have put together and tested and um, edited out and like put together. This is a, the classic way to play Magic, and to enter a constructed match, all you need is a deck that fits that format's specific requirements. Standard is the most popular format of Magic, and it's constructed. How it works is... Each year, Wizard of the, Wizards of the Coast releases four sets of magic cards to the game. Once per year, when the fall set is released, the four oldest sets in the play format are rotated out of the card pool that that standard can have. So that means that every year, four, four sets of cards are no longer allowed in standard. There is a banned and restricted list in standard, although this is constantly being changed since how quickly the ch cards are changed from legal to not legal. The deck rules are you must have at least 60 cards in your deck. There is no maximum deck size as long as you can still shuffle your deck without help. And you can have up to 15 cards as a sideboard. Finally, you can only have 4 car copies of any card in your deck and sideboard combined, except for cards that say that you can have more, or basic lands. Remember, the the card pool for this is very short, and once you buy a deck, you'll probably have to constantly update it for every year for how quickly the card pool changes. The next format is Modern. In Modern, everything from the Mirrodin block and onward is legal. There is also a banned and restricted list in Modern, and this one's far larger since there's way more cards allowed in Modern. Mirrodin was released in late 2003, and that means that there's a lot of cards in between 2003 and now that have been released. The deck rules are the same as in Standard, so it's just that you can put in older cards. So that means still 4 copies of a card, 60 card minimum, and so, so on. Another format is called Pioneer. Pioneer um, is a format where everything from the set Return to Ravnica and onward is legal. There is a banned and restricted list for Pioneer as well. Return to Ravnica re was released in 2012, so Pioneer is kind of like a compromise between Modern, which was started in 2003, and Standard, which is changing every year. However, both Standard and Modern are much, much more popular than Pioneer, so that's that. There's also a format called Pauper. In Pauper, you put together a deck of cards that are only the common rarity. That means there's no Planeswalkers and, and the average power level is way lower. This format has combo decks that are put together with common cards, but they just aren't the same as in Standard. And other than the common only rule, it's just normal with like a banned and restricted list and the 60 card constructed rules. Remember, the power level of the decks that you will encounter um, depends mostly on how many cards you can put in. For example, Standard isn't too powerful, and then Pioneer is more powerful since it has it has everything from Return to Ravnica, and Modern is even more powerful since they have all the cards from Mirrodin and onward. So that explains why the power level slowly increases as the cards get older. Next there's a format called Commander. Commander is very different from Modern and Standard for a lot of reasons. How it works is you choose one legendary creature to be the commander of your deck. And then you choose 99 other cards that are only the cards of the commander's colors. You start with 99 life in this game. If you are dealt 21 or more damage by the commander of the deck that you are facing, you lose. When you start the game, you put the commander in a separate zone, called the command zone, and you can cast it onto the battlefield for its normal mana cost. 
plus two for every other time it's been cast onto onto the battlefield. If it dies, or if it is put into your hand or library, you just put it back into the command zone. Commander is a very complicated format, especially if you play with more than two people. However, it still does count as a constructed format. Next, we have a format called Brawl. Brawl is kind of a mix between Standard and Commander. How it works is you choose a, a commander, just like in the Commander format, and you have some of the same rules as Commander, like you can only have one copy of a card in your deck except for basic lands. Commanders are cast for their normal cost, plus two for every time it's been cast, and the big difference between Brawl and Commander is that you only have 60 cards in your deck, and those cards can only be from a set that is currently legal and standard. So you do have to update this a lot, your Brawl decks a lot. And the cards in your deck also have to be the same color as your commander. And finally, um, you start at 25 life if you're playing with only two players. And if you're playing with more than that, you start at 30 life. Now there's the eternal formats. And one of them is called Legacy. Every card ever printed, except for the cards on the Legacy, Banned, and Restricted list, is legal here. And it has the same 60 card deck rules as standard, you know, like 60 cards in a deck, four, four copies of a card that's not a basic land, and so on. Legacy is a format that people play because they don't want to buy a new deck every year, and um, the decks in Legacy are way more powerful than the standard. And the final most powerful format, where, where you have the most difficulty playing, is called Vintage. It's the same thing as Legacy, so every card ever printed is legal, except for one key difference. There actually is no banned cards in Vintage other than cards that aren't allowed in the format, like Phenomena. There's only restricted cards, meaning you can only have one of them in your deck, which means if you could, this is the only format where you can play a Power 9 card, which is like the 9 most powerful cards. And Vintage is very overpowered, since a good deck can kill you on your first turn if they get the right draws. Again, it's the 60 card constructed rules, and you, you've heard me say it over and over again. I just wanted to point out that Vintage and Legacy, they're eternal formats, and they aren't just very popular anymore, but I think a lot of people would like Vintage and Legacy because the whole playstyle is just different. Wizards of the Coast doesn't really give any attention to th those two formats, and they have a reserved list of cards that they will never print again. Because of this reserved list, a lot of the cards on that list are key to the formats, and since they won't print them anymore, their prices will just get higher and higher since the cards will get older and rarer since people will just lose them or they'll just like disappear the entry barrier for the formats will um just keep on rising and eventually to play those two you'll have to be pretty have a lot of money to play and at some point there's just not going to be enough of the cards on the reserve list that won't ever be printed again but they need to be there for the um for the these two formats to be interesting and they're, it's, they're just both going to crumble. And that just kind of bums me out. The reserve list is not a good thing for these formats. And I understand that it saves the, like the power difference. But like the power balance in Magic. But it just kind of, it, it just doesn't work with these formats. Um, now I'm going to talk about the limited formats. When you play limited, you don't come with the deck that you've already made and tested and updated. You just build the deck as you draft cards. I'm going to talk about that with the uh, booster draft format. However, before I start, I just wanted to ask you whether you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, then please subscribe. Um, I think you'd like the other videos on my channel. And yeah, onto booster draft. In booster draft, you have eight players, including you, and three pa booster packs per person. That is a lot of booster packs. That's like 24 booster packs times 15 cards each. So that's a lot of cards. What you do is you open a pack, take a, one card and pass it down, and the next person takes one card and passes it down, and you repeat this process until all the packs are gone. Then, using the cards that you have picked, you add in as many basic lands as you want, and you make a 40-card deck. There is four copies in this 40-card deck, but there is no sideboard. And drafting is a very complicated process, and I don't really understand it, like the complicated bits, such as like reading, but this... This requires a lot of a lot more skill in other card games, like poker. If you play poker, then you would be better at drafting since you need to be able to read your opponents to be really good at it. 
Another limited format is called Sealed Deck. Sealed Deck is really similar to Booster Draft. The only difference is you get to open six packs per person, not three. And for limited, that's the largest amount of cards that you're getting, but it's still only 90 cards. And you throw in as many basic lands as you want, and you make a 40 deck card deck out of that. Remember, constructed formats, um, you still get more than 90 cards, since there's hundreds of cards per set. The final limited format I'm going to be talking about is the conspiracy format. Honestly, I wasn't sure whether to put this under casual format or limited, but I guess it's a limited format. Conspiracy is the same as Booster Draft, just with Conspiracy cards. Conspiracies affect the game in strange and different ways, and Wizards of the Coast made some special Conspiracy Booster Packs with this format. And, um, it's, yeah, it's Booster Draft, but with Conspiracies. Next, I'm gonna talk about the Casual Formats. The Casual Formats are pretty di are not like the Limited Formats, you come with a deck, and they're pretty similar to Constructed Formats. How the casual formats work is you take a deck of 60 cards with all the same 60 card rules that I've talked about and you add in some special cards that do special stuff. In the video I made where I talked about different types of cards, I started talking about the, these formats, but I'll go over them in a bit more detail. The first one is called the Plane Chase variant. In Plane Chase, you get a special die with four blank sides, one Planeswalk symbol, and one Chaos symbol. You also get a normal deck and a deck and a separate deck with at least 10 plane cards or phenomenon cards. That's called the planar deck. And at the start of the game, the starting player takes a card off of the pl their planar deck, and that card will affect the game. At any time, a player can roll a special die, and if you get a roll that has the planeswalk symbol, you take a card off your planar deck, and that's the um, new plane or phenomenon that's affecting the game. And if you get a, ro a Chaos roll, it activates the Chaos ability on the plane or Phenomenon. You can roll the die for 0 mana, plus 1 for every time you've rolled it this turn. And the plane or Phenomenon changes how the game works, and that's the only difference from uh, Constructed. The next variant is the Vanguard variant. In Vanguard, you start off by agreeing what format you are playing, like Standard, Modern, Legacy, or Vintage. Then you take a deck that fits the format that you agreed to play at, and you add one Vanguard card. This Vanguard will stay with you the entire game, and it cannot be destroyed, targeted, or changed in any way. It affects the game since it changes your starting hand amount, your uh, life amount, and so on. The final variant I'm going to be talking about is Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy is, has a different theme from any other Magic game, it's kind of like one versus everyone else. One player is, you, by the way, you do have to play this with more than two people, since it's just, it's not fun if it's not. One person is, becomes the arch enemy, and they get 40 life, along with a card called the Scheme that are in the command zone, and the rest of the players are fighting the arch enemy, and they all take a turn, all at once, and do, do their stuff. They all start at 20 life. But the schemes are really powerful, and they affect the game in many ways. And if the arch enemy is killed, everyone wins. The arch enemy only wins if everyone else that they're playing dies. That's why you can't really play arch enemy with two people, since the arch enemy has like a huge advantage. And that's all for today's episode of Magic the Gathering. Next week I will talk about the skills that you want to have to play Magic and other things that you can buy that aren't exactly cards. I know I didn't cover every format today, but if you want to see a list of those, you can. I put a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video, I'm sure you'd like the other videos on your channel, so please subscribe. Thank you.